All right, for this talk, I'm going to go over Birkeland currents. Now, a Birkeland current, as it's understood, isn't something that powers stars. That's not what a Birkeland current is at all. A Birkeland current is charged particles exit a star in the form of solar wind. Okay? And that solar wind travels through interstellar space and then gets field aligned, meaning the charged particles travel along the magnetic field lines of a, another object, such as the Earth. And those charged particles will then enter in the polar regions of that star, producing light. And we can see these aurora. I'm not too sure that's how you spell it, but we can see those aurora really strongly in the northern regions of Earth, and I think also in the southern regions. That's what a Birkeland current is. You have charged particles being field aligned by the magnetic field of another star, uh, an evolved star in this case, the Earth. Now, now that you know that, that's what the Birkeland current is. What is strange to me is that Electric Universe, what they want to do is take that simple concept and just throw it all over the place. What they do is they say, okay, you have your star, and then you have currents coming in or no, you have charged particles coming from other places, such as other stars. Okay. Those charged particles coming from another star, entering in the polar regions of a hot star. Say these are sun-like stars. So they both have very strong solar winds. which are exiting the star. Now, it's strange to me, because if you saw earlier, the Earth, where the Brooklyn current was taking place, doesn't have solar winds, meaning it can't push away the incoming current. It can only feel to line it, and it will enter into the polar regions. Now, it's strange to me because EU wants you to say wants you to think that a star ejects charged particles, which then enter in to another star, creating Birkeland currents inside of another star. They want you to believe that somehow these two objects are connected via Birkeland currents, supposedly. But that necessarily doesn't work, because if you've noticed, both of those stars, their solar wind is rejecting other stars' solar wind, meaning there's pressure. This is pressured against that. There is no current. There is no. There are no Birkeland currents connecting these two. If anything, the charged particles that exit each other, each star, will interact and create a large bubble. Okay. Think of bubbles in the bathtub. That large bubble is what's called heliosphere or heliosheath. I'm not too sure which one it is. That heliosheath pushes the charged particles out to as far as it can go to where it hits a region to where those charged particles just stop. They don't go any further. 
because of pressure from other charged particles coming from other stars. Meaning, these two stars are not connected. If you want to connect this to biology, and it's fun connecting a lot of things we see in astronomy and astrophysics to biology, what you can do is look at these types of things as being the nucleus to cells. A cellular nucleus, if anything. And this would be the phospholipid bilayer. Okay? And that phospholipid bilayer would be similar to the heliosheath. It's what rejects incoming material from entering into the uh, cell. And this would be the, the, the solar system. All the other solar system objects are inside of here. Okay? I think that basically sums up the uh, Berkman current argument. As we saw, stars are not connected to each other electrically. If anything, they are pushing against each other as they move through space. The Berkman current only really applies to objects that don't have solar wind. <laughs>